everyone, welcome back to Living Electric. We have an exciting episode and Alex is doing the outro this time. <laughs> That's right. And intro over. <laughs> yes, intro over. Anyways, what are we talking about today? <laughs> yeah, so we've got, uh, first off, want to touch on the Tesla Semi for a little bit, because um, I know that's been all over the news, going to share our thoughts on that. Um, Brandon and Tyler are currently testing a plug-in hybrid EV, a yes. PHEV, and Brandon has told me he is converting. Yeah, you, so. you can't just end the episode <laughs> off like that. We got we to gotta build up the suspense and, you know, why we're talking about that. Exactly. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to, we'll get to Brandon's is, thoughts and why he might be, may or may not be converting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then a topic that I I post about on LinkedIn and I've got some interesting feedback on is just uh, the topic of charger reservations. So whether or not you should be able to like say, hey, I'm going to be there in 30 minutes, block off the charger for me. So I'm going to yeah. get into our, our thoughts on that. So I, I definitely have thoughts on that one. So, <laughs> so do I. So it'll be thoughts. an interesting, interesting conversation there. So, oh, yeah, um, yeah. For the the semi, I know you watched the whole event. What were kind of your key takeaways or initial thoughts on everything? So by watching the full event, I'm just going to be blunt <laughs> and just say that like I kind of chopped it into pieces. Yeah. <laughs> Since I missed the live streaming aspect of it. Um, well, first off, I just have to say kudos to the Tesla semi team for creating such an incredible product. Yeah. Um, you know, the fact that it can go 500 miles with 81,000 pounds of like load in like, you know, the, well, not truck bed, but you know, in the trailer, right. it's insane. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable. <laughs> like I, I know they didn't really touch on specs, but they mentioned it's like a 900 kilowatt hour battery. Right. So it's huge. Yeah. But the fact that it can do that is just incredible. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that certainly impressed me. And I think that kind of shows you just how far the battery tech and like efficiency of just EVs in general has come. Um, cause I think on paper, if you're looking even like 10 years ago, the, the battery size needed the weight of the vehicle just with the batteries alone. And then you throw the payload on top of it. Like it didn't make a lot of sense <laughs> that something yeah. like that would be possible. So yeah, it's very cool that it's heading that direction. I think there's, so much more we've got to think about now on the the infrastructure side is immediately immediately what i went to is like oh, yeah. all right <laughs> if this is really happening on like the bigger vehicles what's our charging charging infrastructure infrastructure going to grow to so yeah yeah it's, it'll be interesting because I've seen so many photos of like, you know, some of like the semis that are testers and like not, not specifically Tesla, but you know, yeah. like from Daimler and, and, you know, Nikola and some of right. the other companies where they've pulled into like a Walmart electrify America <laughs> station. Right. And, you know, they're blocking the whole row of like, uh -huh. you know, traffic. And yep. yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how that infrastructure plays out. I think the most impressive part of that entire presentation was the um the v4 supercharging yeah. that they announced mm -hmm. the the one megawatt of power <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it's Which crazy is insane yeah and yeah. apparently it's a i think close to a thousand volt battery is that right yeah versus the yeah i'm normal, pretty sure they confirmed that normal four or eight hundred that we see on regular vehicles so that was yeah interesting as well so yeah yeah I'm just I'm blown away in the fact that it's still using like the the plaid powertrain like the the tri motor setup yeah. to move this massive you know vehicle right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's impressive I mean I don't know too much about semi trucks you know like that's well obviously you know from conversations we've had in the plaid <laughs> the past <laughs> right but yeah I I just was like blown away and it's exciting to see you know Tesla finally coming you know into production with this vehicle right and delivering them you know right. to PepsiCo and Frito-Lay I I'm excited to see them on the road I know Definitely. it would probably be mainly in California on the west coast yeah but Hopefully we see them here. <laughs> As is everything else, right? <laughs> California yeah. gets all the cool EV stuff first, and then it slowly trickles to the to the East Coast and oh, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly, yeah. I actually saw. I actually saw a Rivian today. I saw like a oh, an, a yellow I, Rivian driving today. It was like oh, nice. behind us. So in Ohio, R1T. of all places, R one T. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I saw an R one T this morning as well, but it, it was oh, not wow. yellow. It was, uh, I think it was L cap gray. That like uh, okay. gray metallic. Gotcha. Do they have an yeah. orange color? It might have been orange actually. The one that I saw. Yeah, they do. Okay, it was. Yeah, an I think orange it's called one Canyon. Then. Okay, I couldn't remember yeah. if they had an orange or not. If I just yeah. like saw it weird, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Rivian's color combo. Like you know, like offerings. Yeah, they got some cool ones. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I feel like this is very random so far. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took us all track there. So um, I thought the other cool part of the event was kind of around just trucks in general. Is they kind of dropped some some Cybertruck teasers of some of yeah. the like truck like features they're going to be bringing to the Cybertruck. So. I'd be curious if they're also going to try to do a like thousand volt battery on the Cybertruck, or I I hope doing extremely fast charging because that would make the value prop for the Cybertruck a lot lot higher. I think or oh, a lot yeah. more impressive. Yeah, yeah, I would love to do an episode on why companies aren't really going with an eight hundred volt architecture and like why so many are still sticking with four hundred. I'm sure it deals with cost and you know yeah, it, and yeah. that factors in. But I've always been curious to know why Tesla has always just stuck with 400 yeah. volt systems. So I'm hoping with like the introduction of like the semi, you know, the more they test this new architecture, they can bring that into some of their other vehicles, especially the Model S and Model X. Like right. those are expensive cars. Yeah. Like, hopefully they can improve on that. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about your, uh, your plug-in hybrid experience. Tell me about that. My <laughs> As I call it, my. <laughs> your what? <laughs> my PIV. Piv. <laughs> yeah, I call it piv or fiv. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, my P-H-E-V. Okay, well, I, I'm just going to preface this, and I don't want anybody to cancel me if I decide to go to a, <laughs> a plug-in hybrid. But um, I grew up around Jeep Wranglers, and you know, we my grandpa worked for Chrysler. He actually worked at the factory building Jeep Wranglers in Toledo, Ohio. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, so like it, they've kind of always been like in my family in terms of like Chrysler. And I've never really liked Chrysler products until recently because they're finally making them better. <laughs> uh, just to be sorry, Chrysler. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I've just never really liked their offering. But like, That's funny. Um, we, we finally have the 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4xe Rubicon, which is like the off-road version. So like it's lifted. It has like the all-terrain tires. Oh. It has more like ruggedness to it. And on a full charge, you can get about 25 miles, which is not a lot, you know, like in the grand scheme of things, but it's good for around town. Like we did our grocery run the other night. We went to, um, you know, grocery run, then we went to Target and like just like kind of all over and we made it home with one mile to spare. Like no, oh, the wow. gas didn't turn on at all, even on nice. the highway, nice. which was really impressive. Um, but for literally moving a brick through the air <laughs> <laughs> not That's built for arrow. Like. <laughs> yeah not at all <laughs> not at all but um i mean like I, I guess for me like i've always i mentioned this to you before i've always loved boxy suvs and yeah. like, my dream is to have a boxy suv right but right now that rivian is like out of the picture <laughs> in terms of cost yeah but um i don't know i've just been really impressed by it like it's it's a great car to drive um, you know, people look at it obviously because you know it's it's a Wrangler. Like they they gather a lot of right. attention. Um, but I've just been impressed so far. Is the the EV mode something you can force to stay on? I know some mm -hmm. plug in hybrids. It like it'll actively switch between the two if you like really gun it or like <laughs> or really use yeah. a lot of energy. It'll automatically switch to gas or like something like that. But you can lock it in. Yeah. Yeah, I, we so we tested the heavy acceleration, and if you really push it, the combustion engine kicks on to help mm. you, you know, accelerate. But um, if you really kind of feather like the accelerator, you can get up to sixty-five miles per hour without the gas kicking on. Wow. Um, okay. But it, it you really have to like it, it's slow. Interesting. <laughs> it's slow in that aspect. But there's uh, three different modes you can choose from. You can choose from like normal hybrid mode that kind of works in parallel, like you know most most hybrids work. Um, and then there's like the all electric mode where it will maintain as much as it can to ride, you know, drive on electric. Yeah. And then there's e save, which is similar to what the Chevy Volt used to offer, where like you can drive using the gas engine and it saves the charge in the battery pack for when you get to your destination. So like oh, you can do okay. your highway trips as like a hybrid, but it maintains that state of charge for you. Interesting. Um, which okay. is pretty cool. And you can set that too, like what state of charge you want it to stick to. Yeah. And it will do that for you. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Plug-in hybrids are so interesting because I feel like they fit a lot of people's use cases so well. Like for people, exactly what you described. It's most of your trips are probably around town. You're either commuting to work or like you said, going to the grocery store, going to Target, then coming home. It's not like... yeah every day you're driving hundreds of miles it's probably yeah. under that <laughs> like yes <laughs> realistically for most people um again like every time 
I try to say that to people. Well, let, well, I drive a ton. It's like, okay, then don't buy an EV. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and um, if you do, be prepared. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, like plug-in hybrids, I feel like make a ton of sense for a lot of people. I'm still on the like bandwagon. Like, I'm gonna go full EV if I can. Um, yeah. But yeah. I still think like plug-in hybrids still have a role at the current like state of things if that makes sense yeah. like that yeah. gives people a lot of peace of mind especially if you're really used to that gas experience um and we may have discussed this before but i think one of the one of the issues sometimes plug-in hybrids run into is people will never plug them in so yeah. like you kind of have to yeah. know that going in with a plug-in hybrid like this is a truly hybrid vehicle like you've got to fuel it two different ways <laughs> you've got to be aware yeah. that you have to plug it in still like if that's something you want to put up with and it's a way to save a little bit of money or like be a little bit bit greener, I think it's a certainly something to look at. Yeah. And the data shows, you know, and it proves your point, like a lot of drivers who buy PHEVs or, you know, plug-in hybrids, they don't plug them in. They just drive them. Yeah. And it's like, they're missing out on the whole benefit of plugging it in. And I think so many people like, like average drivers who buy those vehicles think that they have to upgrade to like a more powerful home charger but the great mm. thing with, you know, plug-in hybrids, they have smaller battery packs. So you can essentially get an overnight charge from your 110 right. in your household outlet. And I think yeah. so many people, like, overlook that. Right. And um, and I think that that's part of the reason why there's so much controversy. Like, well, c- controversy. I don't know why I just said it that <laughs> way. Yeah. Controversy. <laughs> uh, <God>, controversy. <laughs> um, you know, with, with plug-in hybrids, because, you know, like, as you mentioned, so many people, they either stick to what they're used to or they go full ev they don't really kind of like look at the middle which is fine but i think so many people are so worried about the two powertrains merging and the complexity that that brings and that's a concern of mine as well yeah um but i i agree with you like i feel like if so many people would just charge their cars they would reap all that benefit that comes from a plug-in you know right yeah i think that's that's another thing that usually hangs me up too is like a majority like one of the big reasons I got an EV was the the ability to fuel on electricity and the lack of just general car maintenance stuff you don't have to deal with. Yeah. Because I like, I want maintenance and like all of like fixing things and all of this stuff to like be not something I have to deal with. Like, yeah. <laughs> like if I can avoid it in any way, like I am going to. So that is like a huge reason why I got an EV. Whereas with a plug-in hybrid, I feel like you still have so many of those parts. You still have the full gasoline engine, still have to change your oil. Like all of those systems are still in place that could fail or go wrong. Mm -hmm. And granted, like I I tell people now too, it's like any modern car, like it's probably pretty good. Like (laughs) like, (laughs) you, you really can't go wrong by any modern car. Like they are built to last, like they're, they're built to to withstand this, all this stuff, but if you truly want to be like as little maintenance as possible, I still don't think you can beat beat an EV. So no, no, yeah, and, and that was the thing. Like after owning the Volt for like two, I think yeah, I had that to close close to two years. I'm yeah. like losing track of which cars I've owned, but like <laughs> um, you know, there was a point where I plug I plugged it in so much that the gas actually started going bad in the gas tank. So Seriously. like. Yeah, and a lot of Volt owners think of it as, like, a badge of honor if you get, like, the notification because <laughs> the gas engine will actually – or, like, the, the generator, um, to, to, you know, it's – it's I, I'm just going to say it's a generator yeah, because um, that gets a little bit too much in the weeds. But um, <laughs> it will literally said that – it will say your gas will – or your combustion engine will run for 12 hours to kind of pump the gas through, like, you know – the, the tubes and you know get like making sure just that get it getting, moving like, again so yeah. it's like actually gonna yeah, work so it's not just sitting there that's yeah. funny so and in some in some people they've gone so long without using the gas that like the car will have to run on gas for 24 hours to burn through that that still gas interesting it's amazing <laughs> wow but i don't know if like any of these like um newer you know plug-in hybrids offer something like that yeah um i you know i've never been in one or i've never right. owned one long enough to like <laughs> to know. have all those those things happen interesting yeah. yeah 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 what about like when you you mentioned there's a mode on the is it the four by e is like the proper way to say it? it's not four xe it's four no, by e four by e yeah I, I always called it four xe until <laughs> yeah. i watched a video like from <laughs> stellantis i'm like oh it's four by e i'm like That's yeah kind of clever <laughs> i guess that makes sense because it's like a play on four by four like whatever yeah. so okay yeah 
the four by E, you mentioned there's a mode where it'll like basically stay gas on the highway and then keep that electricity for going around town or whatever. Yeah. Can you run it in like EV mode at like a campsite, for example, or like if you're like staying somewhere, or, like if it's just stationary, is it going to run on on electric power? Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Like, are you talking okay. like if it's plugged in? Either if like... it's plugged in or not. Like, I'm thinking oh. with my car, like all the time, I <clears throat> like I'll go somewhere, I'll sit in my car, and I'm like, I'm not burning oh, any fuel. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. the AC's running, yeah. the screen's on, I'm watching something, I'm doing stuff in my car. Um, I'm curious if the, the four by E has something like that. Yeah, you can do that. Um, okay. I, I know it's kind of, um, you know, like if the battery's cold, the gas engine will kick on to like gotcha. warm up the, warm up the battery pack or like, you know, like warm up the vehicle. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that like in my Volt, it would do that all the time. Like if it dropped below freezing, it would run the gas engine temporarily and then bring in, you know, like the electric and gotcha. then go back to gas, depending on how cold it was. Gotcha. Um, but there's been times where, like, you know, this this past few days with the 4 by e we've sat in it for, like, an hour and a half, two hours, you know, playing around with the menus and stuff. And it's just been sitting on electric mode. So. Oh, good. Okay. That's yeah. Good yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the big I, benefits of my car. Even, like, I have a garage now, and, like, it'll preheat in the garage no problems like that's something <laughs> sometimes yeah. you can't even do with a PHEV if you like remote start no. it or whatever sometimes the gas will kick on right so oh yeah yeah it's another thing yeah, to kind of think about oh yeah yeah that's that's one thing well thank god for a detached garage but yeah right. we would never <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's something i would highly recommend somebody never do with yeah. any plug-in hybrid um just because you never know right you know Right. Like, yeah, and, and that's the tough thing with this is that, like, I really, really want a boxy SUV. Like, yeah. I, 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 I like our Model 3 a lot, but, like, the thing that, like, and you're, I mean, you're taller than I am. Like, with it being a lower vehicle, sometimes I feel, I find myself falling into it versus, oh, like, yeah. actually, like, stepping into it and, like, you know, getting comfortable, like, immediately. For sure. And, um, I feel like I would just do better in an SUV. And this past, <laughs> these past few days has like really proven that to me. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's, yeah. I feel like that's the main reason people want SUVs. It's not the, like, it's not how big the vehicle is. It's just how tall they are compared to yeah. regular cars. Like everybody, after they've driven an SUV or like had one, it's, I feel like it's more comfortable to sit in. It's more comfortable to get in. Like you just sit up higher, you have better visibility, like all of that stuff or usually why people are going towards those vehicles it's not necessarily because yeah. it's giant and uses a ton of gas or whatever <laughs> like it's <laughs> it's just the like sitting up higher experience so oh yeah i think that's yeah. why like crossovers and all these vehicles have gotten so popular is because like it's kind of that crop it is truly like a cross between the suv and the regular car oh for sure yeah and, and that's one reason why like i've been kind of keeping my eye on the jeep recon which is mm. like their fully electric suv that's kind of based on the wrangler but it's not the same look, and that's, like, mm -hmm. kind of a turnoff for me. Like, I yeah. like, like, the, it's Tyler called them Defender Flares, like, around the wheel <laughs> arches. You know, they're more, you know, more, uh, I don't want to say masculine, but, like, they're very, like, um, <laughs> like aggressive. Yeah, ruggish. Yeah, ruggish. that's a good okay. way of saying it. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> ruggish. Um, but, and so, like, for me, like, that's the look that I would want. And, like, I gotcha. think that's why I really kind of, like, go towards the Rivian. Yeah. Yeah kind of has something you know similar to that right but i don't know that's is the a... recon out right now i don't no, know if I've looked into that it's 2024 okay so it'll be a little yeah. bit that's the other thing i was going to ask because i'm sure like the the price on the four by e compared to a fully electric one is probably a lot cheaper too so it, yeah. yeah yeah because well the starting price for the four by e went up to fifty four thousand, and like it can max out oh, around like okay. 72 Jeez. but used ones are much more affordable like mm -hmm. we're finding them in like the low to like mid 40s um with like under fifteen thousand miles so like they're wow. still relatively like new um yeah coming used, off leases used car prices are finally starting to cool off and it's yes. <laughs> it's certainly going to help i think it's going to help kind of the ev movement because there's going to be more second hand evs that are more affordable for people where they can say yep. oh yeah i can i can take that chance or take that uh <laughs> take that financial <laughs> burden for an ev since they're just they're just so much less so oh yeah that's good yeah. enough i'm 
I'm glad it's cooling off. But yeah. I do I do want to reiterate to our listeners that if I end up getting a 4 by e <laughs> I already have a plan in place where wherever I go, I will be plugging it in if there's chargers. <laughs> so that way I can, like, maintain that EV mode. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that will uh, – we'll see what happens. But <laughs> just want to clarify. <laughs> right. Yeah. How do you feel? Does the 4 by e have fast charging? Can it do no, it doesn't. DC charging? Oh, okay. Oh, actually, yeah, this is a good topic we need to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, plug-in hybrids, in my opinion, should not have fast charging. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's, there's a reason why you have that gas backup, and I feel like if you're going to block a charging station for a fully electric vehicle... There's something wrong. Like I don't. I genuinely do not believe plug-in hybrids should have fast. How charging. long is a How long is a charging session on a plug-in hybrid? It can't be long. I mean, so well, the Mitsubishi Outlander uh, yeah. is a prime example. It has the blue Chatmo standard, yeah. and it could be thirty minutes to get twenty-five to thirty miles. Oh my god! What's the point? That's like, awful. Yeah, yeah, and wow. the new Range Rovers now have fifty kilowatt fast charging. Um, and they can get about 50 some miles, but that's still like 20 some minutes, like 20 to 25 right. minutes for 50 miles. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're blocking think, it for somebody else. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Cause there's like, <laughs> you're, I think you're exactly right. It's like the, the gas backup is there for a reason. Like you probably, yes. at least in the EV world, usually we talk about it. You have your EV for around town and then you've got your gas for long trips. So you'd still stop at gas stations and you've got kind of that similar road trip experience. But yeah, like when would you need to fast charge a plug-in hybrid? Because <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it either. I mean, like if you're like the only, the only way that I kind of look at it is like, okay, is if you are trying to gain that EV experience yeah. by, you know, getting a, into a plug-in hybrid, getting more comfortable with the limitations of the vehicle or like, you know, limitations of like, well, not limitations, but, um, you know, getting more familiar with like how you're driving is and like how far you typically go to see if an ev would work for you yeah absolutely you don't get the experience at a charging station but like if you know somebody pulls up and you're blocking it you know for somebody who absolutely needs it then like you should go yeah <laughs> like that seems like a lot of work too because like imagine you are on a road trip you've made it 50 miles in it's like hey gas engine is kicking on you're like oh shoot i gotta <laughs> i gotta pull over yeah. and find a charging station it's like right. i don't feel like most people would even do that so no no that's interesting yeah yeah that's where i'm like glad that most plug-in hybrids do not have fast charging because it's just i don't know it to me it just it doesn't make any sense right yeah yeah yeah, yeah i always hate to kind of if that's if you want to be able to fast charge it i want to be like i don't want to poo poo it but like <laughs> it's like no. No. yeah yeah i don't think it makes a ton of sense but i'd be curious to hear hear listeners responses of that if you own a plug-in hybrid like what is your does it have fast charging do you feel like plug-in hybrids should, should fast charge i'm curious uh listeners thoughts on that since we yes. agree all the time we got to get some other yeah. opinions in here <laughs> right <laughs> Well, I don't know about our next topic. That's true. I'm just kidding. Yeah, because you. No, well, like... you mentioned blocking chargers, which is a good good segue into that. So, um, this actually came up uh, due to some work I was doing this past week, and just the question around charger reservations came up. So the idea being, you could kind of plan out your road trip ahead of time. You could say, "Hey, I'm stopping here, here, here at these times. Can I?" click a button and reserve those times. So like, hey, if I get there within five minutes, it's, nobody, it's gonna say, hey, it's reserved, somebody's coming, they've got this blocked already. So technically, like software-wise, all this is possible. Like networks could turn this on tomorrow if they wanted to. <laughs> like the, the, <laughs> the, the capabilities are there, but the question is like, should it be there or should that feature be necessary? I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm really like on fire tonight. Um, <laughs> I, I think it depends on the situation. Like I like okay. on your LinkedIn post, how a lot of people mention like for hotel reservations. I, I think that yes, that would be you know an application of that service that would work well. You know yeah. for for drivers. 
Um, especially like if they could tie it into your hotel reservation, that would make it really nice. You know, if, like I know some hotels would put like traffic cones or whatever blocking a spot right, in a right. way. But like I just like I envision that. For example, like EVgo has reservations for some of their chargers. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if it's like network wide or like you know how that works. But I can only imagine how mad I would be as a driver that had no idea that that was even an offer. You know, and I'm I'm coming to town, I'm low on charge, and I show up to a fast charger, and somebody was like, "Oh no, nope, reserved it. Sorry." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so I don't know. I think it depends on how it's implemented. Yeah, I agree with you on the level two side. I think I think reservations do make sense on that side because you're like, hey, even like for workplace, you could say, oh, I'm reserving it these days because I need it for whatever reason or or I need it like you could kind of block it off so only certain people could charge certain days and you can kind of you can queue people up in that way um, with and for hotels. I think it makes sense as well. Like you're coming for the night you're staying the night you you can block off that charger ahead of time for fast charging i don't think it makes sense like at all (laughs) like and the only reason i say that is like look at the i always compare like fast charging to the the retail like gas fueling experience is like has that been a thing ever for gas where you could like reserve the gas station ahead of time on a road trip no like even (laughs) if even if that were like technically possible through the gas stations app or something like that, I don't think gas stations would ever turn that feature on. No. <laughs> Cause anytime they have that pump that is like open and just waiting for somebody to use it, like they're potentially wasting money if somebody comes up and they're trying to use the pump right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So just business wise, I don't think it makes a ton of sense because you're immediately like and it makes even more sense for EVs where like utilization is kind of low depending on the where the charger is located and application and all that stuff. I don't think you ever want to like take away the ability for somebody to come up and use it. <laughs> like no. I think networks and just EVs as a whole have enough problems right now that we're still trying to overcome that blocking chargers <laughs> should not be something we're like actively trying to do. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah. No, I totally agree with you. I I think like public fast charging should be based on like first come first serve, just like yeah. a gas station. Like yeah. that's how it that's how it works, right? You know, and like if you have to wait in line, that's what you got to do. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that is I, something. Like... Oh, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. That is something you mentioned waiting in line. I think that is something where we need like a better queue up function for where it's like hey you're next on stall 5a or whatever once that car moves take over that spot whereas like or even i think tesla should implement this like tomorrow (laughs) say like (laughs) suggest the stall that somebody should pull into when they get to the supercharger oh that's a good so you don't even have to think about like hey is this power splitting like the tesla system should know like for the grid, for just that site, what is the best stall for that driver to pull into so that they have the best charging experience and the system is still like kept good and you're not overloading anything. Like yeah. they should know that. So I think they should recommend, hey, pull into the stall. And then if everybody is full, have that queue function to say, hey, you have an X amount of minute wait based on the car in front of you or the multiple cars in front of you, how much they need to charge. And you're pulling into 5A as soon as that car moves. Or, hey, you've got one car in front of you, pull into the the next stall after after they move. Something along those lines. I think that is a much more needed feature (laughs) than reservations. Oh, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And another unique feature, you know, to add on to that, it'd be cool if if Tesla or, like, these other networks added a way to show you how long or how much longer that person's going to be charging. Yeah. Like based so like you know like for example like you're at a supercharger station and like it it will tell you which stall is going to be up next that way mm. you can kind of prep for that like yeah and i think that would be useful for other situations too where cars all charge at different speeds right that way you can kind of prep that oh that that's going to be the first one that opens up for me yeah exactly <clears throat> and i think other networks could could do that as well because like we're getting to that point. It's it's going to take another couple of years till we have like all the vehicle information going back and forth and you've got yeah. state of charge and all this stuff and what they're charging to, how long that session is going to take. That's still kind of on the horizon. It's not here yet. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's very much the future, but 
do you have any more thoughts on that? Because I have some like closing thoughts on it. <laughs> oh yeah, I just I think if we could get holograms involved somehow, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool. You know, like have the parking lot. You have like a hologram of like what number you are. I don't know. I mean, oh we're like just uh, talking. or like, like AR you know. would be cool. Like augmented oh, reality yeah. on like your windshield or something. Yeah, I that know would some be cars cool. do that. <laughs> I was thinking more like Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I'm really just dying to have like some type of like holographic card battle. Right. <laughs> 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 at the charger <laughs> yeah. right you duel for your charging spot <laughs> <laughs> new rules <laughs> right that's funny yeah but that's all i had so yeah well i think kind of my my final thoughts on everything is like why are we having these discussions like these discussions don't happen at least not that i'm aware of in the gas industry of like hey what do we do if like somebody if these pumps are full it's they're like oh that's great we're making a ton of money selling gas (laughs) it's like the issue right now is that we don't have enough plugs for certain certain times a year especially Mm -hmm. um like that is the ultimate solution i think is is just building out the charging infrastructure better like we would not be having these conversations about reserving chargers or blocking them or queuing up or anything if there were truly enough chargers for all the vehicles we needed yeah um so I also, this kind of led me off on my own tangent in my, my head of if, uh, I think like you see this in with gas as well, when there's like shortages on it, or unfortunately when there's like hurricanes coming, you have this big rush on the, the gas and you have these long lines. I think it's obviously different, but similar you have similar kind of things around like holiday travel and like yeah. peak travel with EVs. It's like a lot of the superchargers I normally frequent on just kind of my my typical weekend road trips are not generally full. <laughs> but anytime I take a a holiday road trip, like I'm going to be traveling a few weeks for Christmas here and I guarantee you some of those chargers are going to be close to full <laughs> that oh, I almost sure. never yeah. see full. Yeah. So I think I think just that the industry as a whole has a unique problem there where it's it doesn't necessarily need to be built out where it's like we're ready for this huge surge multiple times a day. It's like you've just got to be ready for those like few weekends a year when a ton of people are traveling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, I really feel like maybe that's why Tesla has like pushed their supercharger network so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just making sure that they're prepped, especially for the holiday time. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. And you see them even bringing in those like mobile units, right? Yeah. Where they're like, hey, yeah. it makes financial sense for us to roll these in once a year. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make fence sense to build out more stalls here. So, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah I, but, I agree. It's going to be interesting to see how things play out um, right. just in general with like the EV industry. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, one other thing on that point, sorry if I'm rambling here, but oh, no, you're <laughs> the, good. it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. We're supposed to, right? Yeah. Um, one other thought I have is like, what do right now EV charging stations, typically you have like, you have your transformer coming from the grid. You have typically like an AC to DC converter. And then you have all these like stalls or dispensers or plugs, whatever you want to call them where people pull up and charge. Um, Sometimes they are built out where like that AC to DC converter. Hopefully, I'm not losing anybody here. But <laughs> that you like still got my attention. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that that single box that does that grid conversion to the DC for the charger is only hooked up to like one or two chargers. Whereas like Tesla is really smart because they only have two of those on every site. Like if you have a bank of eight supercharger stalls, they have two AC to DC converters and then they have like wires or buses, like different circuits running to each one. And they can actively switch and balance between all of the stalls on the site. So similar to where I'm going with this is like you think of a gas station, they have those giant tanks underground, right? Where it stores all the gas. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And every... (laughs) We call it a pump for a reason. Every one of those is just a pump. It's just pumping out of that big gas tank. So instead of like overthinking it where like you need multiple of these AC to DC converters, one for every charger, like just have one giant one that's able to balance between a bunch of stalls on site. You can just balance between all of them with software. 
it's a lot smarter than trying to like have dedicated charging or dedicated circuits for every one, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. And and this is exactly why we appreciate your knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, that one's free. I, I mean, I'm charging a yeah. consulting fee for the next yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. This portion of the podcast is behind a paywall. <laughs> <laughs> no that's really interesting i mean like this is all information that like i don't have when it comes to like charging installs that like i wish i mean it's good that i'm learning about this now but like this is stuff that like i i wish and i hope all ev companies start introducing to their employees so like they're aware of it you right. know and, like this is even if you're even if you're just a customer service representative or you know all the way up to an executive like you should know this stuff like i think right. it's interesting like even yeah. if you don't implement it throughout your day it would still be good you know good to know right and just understanding the business behind it too because like i prefer that kind of setup because then it's more modular too like yeah. what happens if a gas pump goes down they just like they repair that single gas pump and all the other ones are still working. It's not like it has any effect on the other gas pumps around it or, <laughs> yeah. or like similarly for charging, like at Tesla stations, if a single stall is down, it's just that stall. It doesn't affect the ones around it. And I've seen some charging site setups where it's like, if one of them goes down or one piece of equipment goes down, then like it can cause the problems on the other ones or it could cause oh, yeah. problems on, the, on another plug. Like there's just, needs to be a little bit more modularity and kind of redundancy with things i think <laughs> yeah so yeah we should do a whole episode on that that'd be interesting <laughs> yeah i've got a lot of thoughts on it so <laughs> well, let's do it <laughs> <laughs> as always this ends with uh us <laughs> either complaining or telling uh, telling how we want the future of evs to be yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> well this is exactly why we work in the industry <laughs> that's right that's right you know yeah, we, you know, got to make the, got to make the difference. Got to right. improve the industry for every driver out there. So <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Well, you ready for that outro? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to <laughs> cue it up for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all and the, go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all the thoughts we've got here. Um, certainly like, like every episode, we uh, are open to feedback on this stuff. We've got some excellent comments on the last episode. I don't know if you got a chance to look through some of those on YouTube, but we got uh, no, some. No, I didn't. We got some good feedback, so appreciate those comments. Definitely keep them coming, and uh, we'll talk to you all in the next episode.